get going here. Uh, today's session, we will be using an, any logic interactive way. So I'd ask people to call up um, any logic if you have a computer with you. Thank you. Uh, oh. Well, I'll be. Uh, if you if you don't have a computer with you, with you, uh, try to pull up to someone who does, and we'll uh, uh, we'll be using that. We, we won't immediately launch into it, but we'll launch into it in a few minutes. So it'll be good to to have it up for um, uh, for use in uh, in this in the coming minutes. Okay, um, so today we're going to be speaking about a topic um, that uh, I had asked you to review uh, via videos. And, and that's the topic of this somewhat higher level abstraction or idiom that are you building block within system dynamics known as a first order delay. So we talked about how the vocabulary of system dynamics was quite compact. And certainly compared to discrete event modeling on the one hand, or event modeling on the other, the vocabulary we use, the alphabet as it were, uh, of system dynamics modeling is particularly parsimonious. What are some of the main building blocks in a system dynamics diagram at the most basic level? What what are the two most basic? Uh, head, yeah, stocks and flows. Stocks and flows. That's right. And we have supporting variables, things like uh, what I call it, auxiliary variables or any logic dynamic variables, which represent sort of instantaneous calculations based on on others, often associated with formulas. Um, we may have constants uh, that are used there. Uh, but, and, and, and even things like, in, in some packages, uh, lookup functions and so on. Um, but, but it's really stocks and flows at the heart of the matter. Stocks are the state of the system, right? The current state of the situation. And flows, so they're kind of the nouns. And flows are the, represent change in that state, right? And the number associated with the flow represents what? So if we if we have a model where the time unit, the kind of meter stick by which we measure time, was here, uh, the value of a the flow then, if it was 10, what would it mean? Rate, yes, Pat. The rate of change. Rate of change, that's right. It's 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 rate of change, and particularly. We 10 units of whatever, maybe it's 10 people per what? Per year, per unit time, right? So if a stock has units, people, a flow out of it or a flow into it, and it can be any number of them, right? Um, we'll have units and if if time unit is this year will be what people per year right um right? and in general we talk about dimensions stock uh, flows are always per unit time right and we, we may in our model use a unit of time of years or months or weeks or days or you know, pick your pick your time unit. Um, that's just what does one mean? Does it mean one year or one month or one one day? But the flows into and out of a stock with dimension x, like people, are going to be of dimension people per year. Are we comfortable with that? I think that was commented on a little bit in that video. Um, this is. It turns out really useful to keep in mind. I know it, it may seem like just another thing to memorize, but it will clue you in to what formulas you want. For some it will highlight when the formula can't be what you think it might be. Um, it will point out when there's a, an inconsistency in the model that it's not logically uh, correct. Yes, Malcolm. 
Yeah, so just as a best practice, is it common to stick to one unit time consistently across that, or is it common to go yes. across different scales that you might use? Or if so, should you always like round to the smallest? Good question. So so the model as a whole and in any logic and all these system dynamic softwares of which I'm aware, um had it'll it'll have one unit of time specified for the model. Um now it may be that in your model, you have some quantities specified as maybe it's a parameter, an assumption. Maybe maybe it's um, you know contacts per day or something like that. Um, or the number of people that can be treated per day by a nurse or something like that in a clinic. Um, we may, for convenience, have certain components of a model characterized in a different unit. But when we go to combine it with, with other factors that are measured in the model, we will typically need to convert this over sooner or later into a per year, for example. So, so it might be more convenient to specify this as context per day, just because that's how the data is available to you. It's transparent. It's traceable to the source of data but then when you when you got a unit and when you got to use it in the model if the if the unit is different you'll convert it along the way to 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 the unit used for the model uh as a whole and so there may be sub areas of the model that are in per day but ultimately when they have contact with things and when you for example divide the number of people in here by some mean time they spend in this stock before leaving with this flow here, um, you will, you would, you would be making sure you divide it by a value of, of dimension year. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't divide it by day to get people per year. It, it would be off by a factor of 365. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to people? And what, I'll see if I can return to that point in today's exercise a little bit, okay? Um, to, to be more specific about that particular example in mind. Okay. Um, so we, we introduced in that video discussion slightly above the level of these most basic building blocks, stocks, flows, auxiliary or so-called dynamic variables. We, we introduced this notion of a first order delay. And what's what's the hallmark of a first order delay? What is it that we, if we look at it, we'll know it's a first order delay? Anyone say? If we, we saw an example of it, how would we recognize it as a first order delay? Yes, Babs. Uh, the outflow of very many of the Good. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. So there is a stock. There's one stock. And there's an outflow from the stock. Typically, often there's an inflow too. I mean, if there's no inflow, it's kind of by extension, we could treat it as an inflow of what? Of zero, the rate of zero. But there's always an outflow. And this outflow depends linearly on the values of the stock. Mm -hmm. And when I say depends linearly, what? What do I mean the formula is here? So this stock is called X. X marks the stock. <laughs> this is X. Um, what, what's the value? Oh, what's the formula for this, Ethan? Like alpha X? Yeah, for example, alpha X. Or it, it could be equivalently X divided by some value. I mean, right? I mean, Either one of those in its linear, those are two different ways of phrasing it. If alpha, if alpha, alpha is a constant, x is the value of the stock. Um, if alpha is a value one over mu, okay, if, x, if alpha is one over mu, then the value of this, of this flow is x over mu. Right? Um, or, Equally so, if if we had mu be one over alpha, then then 
you know, it, it would it would yield the rate of alpha times x. Um, so here we have two different ways of phrasing this, and and uh, we call alpha here. We multi if the outflow is such that the flow out of this is specified as a linear formula, as Bab said, as alpha x, right? We call alpha the rate of the flow. Okay, now it's a bit confusing because you say, wait, wait, flow has a rate of people per day. This is, this is, is uh, I will be more specific. This is a hazard rate, okay? It's a chance per unit time that one of the things in this stock will, will leave. Okay, so maybe it's 1% per day. Certain chance per day that something in the stock. So maybe X is 100 people in it. And the chance per day that someone there will leave that stock is, is 0.01. If that were the case, how many people would we expect to be leaving in a given day on average? There's a hundred people here, and the chance of leaving if alpha is 0.01, then it will be how many people leaving on average per day? One, one, one. 0.01 times on. Are we good with that? Okay, so this is called the hazard rate. You'll hear me using the term hazard rate. Now, I do that partly to distinguish that from what we might call the rate of the flow, you know. How many things are coming out per unit time out of the flow? Like one person per day. This is the chance that someone's in here or something in here will leave per day. Okay? It's not a probability. It's a probability per unit time. It's what we call in math or statistics and in cognate domains like physics, et cetera, we call it a probability, a temporal probability density. That's a bit of a mouthful, but. But, but it's basically um, acknowledging the fact that it's, it's a probability per unit time. We'll come back to this, okay? Now, mu here, if we so we could phrase this as alpha times x. That's one linear characterization. An equivalent linear cal uh, characterization is to say that it's x over mu, where mu is is what? Does anyone remember from that video? It's the it has a very intuitive meaning. The mean the mean time someone spends in that stock before leaving before leaving the fifth slot. Um. So this is the mean time in the stock. That's done. The mean time that something in the stock will spend before it leaves here, this plug. And what's the relationship between mu, between this mean time you spend in the stock and this hazard rate of leaving? So if I've a hazard rate of leaving 0.01, What's the mean amount of time they're spending this off? No. Alpha equals one over mu? One over mu. So if alpha is 0 0.01, then mu will be what for this case, for this particular example? It would be one over that, right? One over alpha. The value of mu is one over alpha, which is what? What's the value? 100. 100, right? 100 time units is how long they spend there on average. And it, it kind of makes sense if, if, you, if you think about it. I mean, look, if mu is one over alpha, you put one over alpha in the denominator here of x over mu, you put, you substitute in for mu one over alpha, you know the rule for dividing one fraction by another, right? It'll that alpha will come up here will be alpha x, right? Mm -hmm. And if alpha is one over mu, that, that is the case. Mu is one over alpha, alpha is one over mu. They're just reciprocals of one another. I think that term should be familiar to people, right? 
one is one over the other, one divided by the other, right? Um, if that's the case, if alpha is one over mu, then what you write is one as alpha times x could be written as x divided by mu, right? We comfortable with that? So these are two ways we could frame that. And each has a really good intuition. Alpha is hazardous. It's my chance per unit time of leaving. It's roughly speaking, it's like I have a 1% chance, let's say, of leaving per day. Okay. It's a little bit more subtle than that for reasons we'll be talking about, but it's it that that's a very good sense. It, it, it was a chance per day of leaving if you're in that stock alternatively. You could frame it as well. I have a certain amount of time I spend in the stock on average, and just praise the outflows divided by this. Okay, over there, I spoke not ten minutes then about units. So you're going to tell me, mu. What are its what's its dimension? We we talked about units being sort of a a certain meter stick. Dimension is like the type of thing that's measured. So time is a dimension, for example. Area is a dimension. Length is a dimension. Mm -hmm. And unit would be, what, what are different units of length? Can anyone give me different units of length? Uh, yes, uh, is, it, is it Troy? Yeah. Yes. Uh, like meters, kilometers, yeah. parsecs. Good man. Um, that's right. Light years, um, uh, you know, angstroms, microns, for those who are minded towards the physical sciences, um, inches. It's not particular to the system in Gnasty you know, you know the, the, the system of metric uh, that we commonly associate with metric system, right? Units of length also include weird things like inches and feet and yards and various things like that. And it's not specific to any one cultural context, right? Um, in China, they have the Li as a unit of measure. Um, and uh, I think there are furlongs and fathoms and stuff like that that are all measured of, of length. Those are all units of length. Length is the dimension. Were you comfortable with that notion? So there's many different units often by which we quantify things of a certain dimension. The dimension is the more fundamental. Thing. If I want to convert a measurement phrased in one unit, let's say phrased in terms of meters to one phrased in terms of centimeters, what do I do? Like if, 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 I, if I say, this is, Two meters. What would I do to convert it to centimeters? Try you multiply it by the ratio. Yeah, by the ratio of a thought. We're comfortable with that. Or if I want it, if if I have something phrased in terms of weeks, right? Weeks is a unit for what? Time. Time, right? And if if you give me something, you say it's going to take three weeks. I can convert that to days by doing what? Multiplying it by seven, right? Familiar thing, right? But they're both units of what? Time. Time, you know? Time is the more basic thing. By contrast, you cannot, cannot lie, convert from something that's of dimension length and convert it to something of dimension time by itself. You can't like multiply it by something and, and get something of dimension time directly. Um, there's no dimensional constant that you can render. You, you'd have to have you know something else that tells you, well, you know, you're going at this speed or what have you to, to convert between them. Uh, yes, can. So you need a rate, like some form of rate to convert, convert between a temporal and spatial. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is that whenever we phrase something of a certain dimension and a certain units, we automatically have the ability to convert from one unit to another that's just given as part of the definition of what that unit means. Whereas 
you can't do like you you cannot say well a square foot is uh a is it just is by definition you can't say it is by definition a year or something like that you you can only in in the context of a formula like multiply it that would say you know um how many years does it take to tile a square foot of, of space or something like that not the large value um it's very quick. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so what I'm saying is when you have different units of a given dimension, their very definition allows you to convert between them by by um by going back and going back and forth just by converting in terms of units. Uh, excuse me, in terms of these uh, these ratios of these units. It's not that way for going between dimensions. Um and in our models. It's a problem if we're adding things of incommensurate units, right? Like we, we don't want to have in our simulation model a value phrased as people per year and add it to a value of people per week. That wouldn't make sense, right? We need consistent units for them. What's even a more deep error is if you have something that's dollars and you add it to time or something like that. Like it, that that has no meaning whatsoever, and you can't just scale it by some dimensional, you know, some ratio of of, of units and and convert it from one to the other. That it's more basic quantity. So just remember, it's easy in computer science, you know, shockingly easy in, that that these these factors are not discussed more. There, if you take physics courses, this is going to be all over your education the notion of dimensions and units. And there's all sorts of great insights you get from these. You can figure out your formulas. You can, you can reduce the number of parameters within your model. You can create scale models, like a bridge. You want to characterize a bridge over the Saskatchewan River, um, and you create a scale model of it that's smaller but has the same basic properties of it. It's consistent with the bigger bridge and you know how to do measurements on the smaller bridge and convert them to what the measurements would be on the larger bridge. This is all part of, of engineering and physical ed and, and physics education, creating de-dimensionalized models, identifying dimensionless constants. There's, there's some deep stuff there that we'll be talking about in this class because the, the world, the universe does not care about units. So when we build models of the world, there needs to always be, I mean, the world's processes do not care about whether or not we are using in Canada units or of, of metric or imperial units. The world's descriptions of the world have to be possible that do not depend on our unit systems. And it turns out that really constrains. It, it, it gives us a lot of clues to what those models might be. There has to be a description of the processes we're interested in that is amenable to description without caring about our specific units. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to these points more deeply, but for right now, I just wanna deal with it at this prosaic level. Um, so the unit or, or the dimension, even more basic, at a more basic level of mu of this average time spent in the stock is what? The dimension is even set in that very sense. Yes, even time, time. Mu, the mean time in the stock is of dimension time. And if the unit of your model, the unit of your model, time unit of your model is years, it'll be in years, right? If the time unit of your model is in days, it'll be in days. Hmm? What? So I'll write it like this in these brackets. That we often do this. The dimension of, of alpha is what? Yes. 
One overtime. One overtime. Or per unit time. And you can think of this one up to the denominator as being a, we, we, we say, and it's a poor description, but a dimensionless quantity. It's actually not dimensionless. That's a, it's a poor, I, I say it's not dimensionless because that's, that's like saying something of unit length is lengthless. That doesn't make sense. Um, it's not that it's lengthless. It has a very particular dimension. It, it's independent of our unit system. It has a value that doesn't care how we measure, for example, your time. What, what's in the denominator? And we can think of this as a, for example, give me a give me a dimensionless, give me a quantity that's dimensional. Yeah, you can Reynolds number. Good. Reynolds number is a beautiful example. Um often the quantities that are dimensionless in the world, the 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 physical units that are dimensionless are really important things. And they they clue us in, they whisper to us about the fact that the universe is characterized by processes that are independent of our unit system. They're related to it. This is excuse this to great insight. It said that when Oppenheimer, did anyone see the movie Oppenheimer? Yes. Yeah. And, and it said that Oppenheimer, when he viewed uh, the explosion of the, the world's first atomic bomb in Alamogordo, well, outside Alamogordo in uh, New Mexico, he as it was exploding, he dropped um, some pieces of paper. They blew. And he was able to use like how far they traveled in the, the value for gravity to figure out how powerful the bomb explosion. Another physicist, I think it was Taylor, looked at pictures of the bomb explosion that he knew were taken at, at like three different times. And he figured out the, med the, the kilotonnage of the bomb from the picture. And he worked through dimensional analysis to do that. So it turns out like there's amazing feats of like martial arts you can do <laughs> at, a, at an analytic level if you understand dimensional analysis. There's something really deep going on. But at the most prosaic level, it also offers, offers insights and, um, and it all hangs together. So, what, the fact that this is one means it's independent of dimensions. So you had mentioned Reynolds number. Let me give you another example that's independent of units. If I said, what fraction of the floor of this room is covered by these desks, right? Right, but, you know, if we really studied it, we could figure out of all this area in the room, what fraction is covered by these desks, right? And what I'm claiming to you, what I'll argue to, what I'll submit to you, is that that will be independent. That fraction will be independent regardless of whether I do the measurements and the calculations in metric units. I'm in centimeters and room dimension in centimeters. Whether I do it in meters, whether I do it in yards, whether I do it in furlongs or indeed in light years. It'll be amount of area occupied by these desks divided by the amount of area of the room and the units cancel. Do you get that sense? So it'll be like square meters for the desks divided by square meters for the, for the area of the room, right? Or it'll be square inches for the desk divided by square inches for the room, right? We, we good with that idea? Or it could be, I could measure these desks, their area in acres. Acres for the desks in this room can be pretty small, amount of acreage, divided by acres for the room size. And what I'm saying is the units cancel. Do you get that sense? And you get dimension, dimensionless. The, the actual better term for it is unit. It's of unit dimension. It's independent of our units. It doesn't care. It doesn't in any way encode. It doesn't change based on what unit system we use to compute it. it all that cancels out. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Daniel. 
Isn't uh, one over time frequency though? It is. It is. You can think of this as frequency. Mm -hmm. Um, you can uh, and and that's one of the more common places you will see that uh, appear. I want to introduce another way of thinking about it in this case that will be useful. Um, um. I mean, you could think about in frequency as this notion. It doesn't always have to be a sinusoid, right? It could be the number of, of these things that happen per unit of time, mm -hmm. for example. Right? Um, could be peaks of a sine wave, but it could be number of people that walk in the door per unit per unit of time. Right? That's a um, uh, or probability per per unit of time, and that's what I want to talk about. Often, Jeff. This thing that's up here in the numerator is a fraction. It's like the fraction of coin flips that turn out heads. It's a probability. So probabilities be of unit dimension because you have like number of heads when you flip coins divided by the number of coin flips. So it's coin flips divided by coin flips. I can count my coin flips and thousands, you know, 500 coin flips would be point five. Right? Um, that it turned up heads and and it would be one and the denominator because a thousand is constant point flips is it's my sure it's one. It doesn't care. It's the fraction of them that turn up heads. So the numerator and denominator um uh, cancel. So this alpha, this chance of leaving per unit time, that you can think of this as a probability per unit time. Hmm? Are we okay with that? So it's dimension is of one unit. No. So every year, every year I teach this course. Every year I see bright young faces looking at me like your own. And every year, ladies and gentlemen, at the final exam, I exaggerate a bit, but. <laughs> um, Sometimes it animates me in ways that are not unique to sorrow, but rather to shock and horror. Um, because I will be asking people, do you have some average amount of time they spend in the stock? You, right? This is a first order delay. Break down the formula for it. For, for this outflow. And guess what they give me? Please don't give me this. Please don't make me cry. What, what do they write down? They write down mu times x. No. <laughs> or journey like that. Do you see how this is dimensionally problematic? If I have the outflow be mu times x, what is that saying the dimension of the outflow is? It's the dimension of x. Times people, yeah. It's not funky, right? That's it. It's like person. Yeah. The, the 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 flow out is person. Here. No, you want people per unit time, right? Per time. Hmm? And this is not going to give you that. This is going to give you people times time. Yeah. So if you have trouble remembering, is it divided by? Or sorry, x. Divided by mu, yeah, really, you know, x divided by mu, or is it x times mu? Just remember their units. Just remember their dimensions. So more, even more basically, the dimension of mean time in stock is what? The dimension is time. I will give it to you by saying, you know, you have mu, the mean time in the stock. Write down the formula. And it's mu times x. And I'm weak. Similarly, if I frame it as chance per unit time, chance of probability is a dimensionless quantity. It's like number of coin flips that turn up heads divided by number of coin flips. And whether you measure coin flips in tens of thousands of coin flips is one or Millions of coin flips is one, or per coin flip, one means one coin flip. It cancels out because it's heads divided by total number of coin flips. So alpha 
is going to be a unit you know, one over time. Are you comfortable with this idea? So if you remember that, you're not going to make this mistake. You're never going to get confused about that. And you all will be working towards having the keys, the kingdom of understanding more physical systems, more powerful, beginning to work towards having this lens by which you can analyze systems in the world. And there's amazing things you can do. And you, one of the best things you can do at a practical level is five errors in your model. If, if you know these, how to analyze this, you'll find you, you head off all sorts of issues. You find the state, and that's why end logic and power sim and then sim and these other packages allow you to specify the units associated with different quantities of model, and it will check the units and make sure they're consistent. So you're not doing something silly like adding dollars to people or you know, people and adding people plus people per unit time and getting a number for it, which is full of sound and fury, but signifies nothing. Nothing. You don't want to model. You want to model that is full of things. Take it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any questions about that before? We move on to any logic, because I had asked you to summon it, bring it forth, and we're going to start using it within a minute or two, unless there's a question. Any questions? Notion of dimensions and units. Question? We'll be coming back to this quite a bit. I, I kid you not that, like, if you really understand that, you will be so much further ahead. And again, I could rattle off my things. You can create scale models. You can create scale agent based. Instead of having a model with a people in it, you have a model with 100,000 or 50,000 people, and you know how to go from the results of that to the results what it would produce for a million. A bit of caveats, but um, involving some statistics. Um, uh, you can calibrate your model with fewer parameters because you can calibrate the parameters that take advantage of the dimensional structure, and there are fewer of them that need to be calibrated. You can do sensitivity analysis with fewer parameters. You can state your model with fewer parameters. You can make a characterization model that's independent of unit systems. Besides being able to check, check, check your model. So it's it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. It's a powerful thing, and it's something which needs to be applied more in in uh, computer science, uh, in and even in IT things like database compounds, the physics dimensional structure that you know where to look, and there can be formulas that you put together that are full of sun and fury but signify nothing if you're not careful. Yes, go. Uh, is there any issue in any logic with the time step used to like, create like negative values where otherwise in a continuous sense there would never be negative values? Yeah, so so I want to talk a bit about time step because this is something which comes up as well. People get confused between time unit and time step. And I'm not saying Jeff is something confused, but I want to be careful because it's something to which we we also return in the final exam. Um Time step is how finely, I'm going to use some words here that some of you will appreciate more, but it's how finely it's numerically integrated. How finely we're simulating time as we're characterizing what goes on. That's different than a time unit. The time unit of the model may be a year, but when we may be simulating at a time, as we're figuring out what the value of the flow is, what the value of the stocks are, and totaling up how the stock changes as a result, we may be simulating that on a time, time step of 0.1 days, for example. Mm -hmm. Those are two separate things. Don't get them confused. Time step is about how you total things up, numerically integrate it. Take little bits of time, calculating 
the flows and, and updating the stock values of the stocks and going forward. That's time set. Ton unit is just what does one mean per, per ton? If I had mu one, well, if my ton unit is days, one will be one day. If my ton unit was years, one would be 1.0. Something of, of dimension time of 1.0 would be one year. Are, are people comfortable with that distinction? Now, what Jeff was asking about, though, was a deeper question about the miracle. Very, you know, if, if that time step, it's not fine enough. Could the model results produce anomalies? Could could it numerically do a poor job at simulating the underlying differential equation? And the answer is yes. Yes, that's true. So generally, you want to be careful about your time step to have it be sufficiently sufficiently small that it will converge to the to the correct solution and that means just being being careful to um that you are thoughtful in your choice of concept and i can show you where this is and that you can select this there's other for those familiar with the basics of numerical analysis or taking differential equations classes or race bateri's classes in numerical analysis I'll just note that um, there's, you know, there's a much bigger subject. It gets into things like choosing integration method, like Runga Kutta versus Euler, and, and whether it's variable size, Runga Kutta, or fixed size. And in this class, we don't have time to, to do justice to that. Some of, some of the other classes in math uh, slash computer science do get into these issues on numerical analysis. Okay, so generally, there's numerical methods that are implemented by the system dynamic software to solve this accurately, and you need a sufficiently small time step for that to be to be accurate. Okay, we good with that? Okay. Um. Okay. So, call up your any logic. Yeah. You know? Okay, so we're going to switch over to any logic. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to create a new model. Here we go. And this is going to be called first order delay um, uh, faces. Two faces. Okay. And it's going to be of units time units, days. So 1.0 is going to be uh, something that's of dimension time, 1.0 in value will mean 1.01 days. Be good with that? Okay. I'm going to call it two faces V1, just because I'm going to... Yeah. All right, here we go. Here's our paddle. Okay, let's go to the SysMonyMX palette. It's up there uh, under the drop and above the kind of Da Vincian symbol for measure of man. Uh, it's this one here. And here we have the SysMonyMX palette, which is our various building blocks. So a first order delight. We talked about first order delight. And uh, Matthews, I don't know, were you able to get out a photo of this? Right. You want to come on the list for Yeah, yeah. Um, so what are the building blocks of a first order delay? What are the things in it? There are two key components. Babs told us earlier. One, he told us it was implied. One, he told us explicitly. It needs, for it to be a first order delay, for it to qualify to be called a first order delay, it has to have what? One what? One stock. So let's drag in our stock. I'm gonna make this stock called um uh yeah, but I'm I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example given that um thing will be um uh People um, um, 
water in pond. <laughs> pond water. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, what it lacks in creativity, it makes up for an enthusiasm. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to drag it here. Okay. Is it? Yes. It's the first Tuesday of the month. So this Thursday, Thursday. 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 Thursday.